G'day everyone, this is a new release for 2022, the Lotus 79 by Hasegawa. It's a 120 scale Formula 1 kit in mostly plastic. It's the 1978 German Grand Prix Detail Up version. So let's uh, jump in and have a closer look. So the new part of this release is that it's the detail up version. There's extra parts uh, to provide a higher level of detail on this build. The Lotus 79 was originally released by Hasegawa in about 2010, I think it was. And then there was a reboxing of it done just a few years ago, um, which was of the same event, the German Grand Prix of 1978. But uh, yeah, this is a new release with the extra parts. Now, it says here that it is limited edition, but I have not found anything um, that says what the limited edition is. If there's a, a certain production number, um, I can't read the Japanese on here. Maybe that says something, but um, I'm just running around the box here. But yeah, I can't find anything to say how limited this is. Uh, reference number SP498 or 52298. I'm not sure how the numbering works on this, but it's a 120 scale kit. Um, this company also does a number of 124 scale Formula One models, but uh, I'm only interested in the in the 120 scale because it matches what uh, I've got by Tamiya. These are pictures of the actual model, and it includes the older style helmets. Uh, 159 pieces in this kit, so uh, quite a high part count. And uh, $110 Australian is what you'll pay thereabouts in this country. Now, I messed up uh, some recording here. I've already opened this part, this this, uh, this bag. Um, it included the main body um, side pods here. And uh, I've just noticed it's got the Zeus fasteners cast in. These are the little fittings that hold the body down on the on the real car. And that, they were difficult to keep those retained uh, keeping the detail level retained when sanding and cleaning up the body and all of the coats of paint. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, now, this detail up kit includes proper fine mesh to go over the intakes for the fuel injectors on the on the engine. And this is also the seat belt material in a, in a sort of a blue cloth, cloth, I should say. And it's already identified with the branding on there. Um, and this must be from the original issue of this kit where the intake covers were just a clear piece. But they've uh, still included that as, as part of the kit for some reason. And there was also um, a bag of tyres in there. So, and these are rubber tyres with, uh, looks like no markings on them at the moment. And also in here, we've got um, the main, it's all in one bag, all of the different parts. So, again, we'll just uh, open this up because... It needs to be opened at some stage, so why not have a look now? And then you can see all of the uh, individual sprues and what they've got. I'm trying to get this bag to give birth. All right, so the top one is the main um, body cockpit cowling. Again, there's the little Zeus fasteners are cast into this, so. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to retain those or and potentially lose detail. Uh, okay, we've got multiple roll hoops because this car did run in various different configurations and, and Mario Andretti's car, which is the one I'll build, um, and Ronnie Peterson's did have some differences. So it looks like that Hasegawa have identified those because there's alternative uh, roll bars here. So it's some body parts. We've got the main tub, the lower half and an insert for the lower half. It includes where the cockpit is and fuel tank, the top uh, scuttle area, I think they call that, some radiators, all looking okay, various pieces of wing, rear wing components, front wings, end plates. Uh, we've got some uh, plumbing here uh, for coolant. Um, again, this must be the original seat belts that came in the original release of this uh, in plastic, uh, but this particular kit includes cloth belts as part of the detail up. I'm assuming 
that's um, the reasoning for why these are still here and the, uh, the seat. The underbody, which is that curved, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but the curved tunnels, which are a little bit similar to what they're running now in Formula One. Um, they've got a couple of little uh, Vortex generators underneath. Uh, plastic side skirts, although on the box, those are illustrated in metal, so there must be more parts in here. Um, I've got wheels, brakes, rear wheels are in two pieces, one piece front wheel, very much like how uh, Tamiya kits of the 1970s style cars are, steering wheel on there, casting quality all looks fine. I've never built a Hasegawa kit before. I've uh, mostly done Tamiya, so it'll be interesting to see how this all goes together. Uh, these are all of the suspension parts, the upper rocker arms, lower ray arms, springs, and uh, uprights, rear uprights here look like they're in uh, two halves. So they must, the poly caps will, must go in those so that the wheels can be rotated. And engine pieces for the Cosworth or Ford Cosworth V8, the gearbox is in a couple of halves here as well, exhaust pipes, yep, it's all looking good so far, and in the bottom of the box are tyre decals and we've got some photo etch here, it looks like there's, um, we can either spray the Goodyear markings or use these, now there's no Goodyear, it's Goodyear but there's no Eagle which is possibly correct, but back in those days they might not have ran the Eagle branding on the tyres, but um, anyway, we've got front and rear Goodyear identifications plus a template to spray if need be. Now here we've got metal side skirts, so that's part of the upgrade kit as opposed to the plastic ones that were on one of the other sprues. There's um, disc brake facings here to give a more realistic metal uh, finish and a number of different uh, meshes to go over the radiators and coolers. Oh, and Zeus fasteners, now's the camera going to pick those up so that should mean that we can sand off the Zeus fasteners that are molded into the body and get a nice finish and then just stick these on at the end so that's that's good that's very good the decals uh, they're made by Cartograph which also do um, Tamiya and a lot of other really good kit makers use Cartograph for their decals um, now there's no John Player Special included here and that's because at the German Grand Prix they couldn't run tobacco advertising so I guess you could buy up the market John Player Special and do a different version of this but I'm, I'll probably just build this as the, uh, the winning car from the um, German Grand Prix of that year which was Mario Andretti's number 5 version but you can do Ronnie Peterson's number 6. That's all of the, uh, the pinstriping to go on and uh, we've got the, uh, the instructions here mixture of Japanese and English and again I have not built a Hasegawa kit before so I'll have to get my head around how they number things and uh, what the colour references etc mean although with this particular car there's I've got a lot of reference material in books and magazines to uh, to look at and just sort of uh, colour things by eye and as well as um, online resources uh, Tamiya are generally pretty accurate with their colour recommendations, but th I know that there are some errors on some of the Tamiya kits, so I'll just have to see how this goes. I'll, have to, I'll do a closer study of these instructions when it comes time to build this kit. So while this is, as far as I'm aware, it's just been recently released here in Australia, and um, I'm not sure when I'll get to build this because there's a, the stash is getting bigger. <laughs> I'm not getting through the kits, building them as fast as I'm buying them, but uh, I think this one will be fairly much towards the top of the stash, simply because um, it's a high detail kit, looks like it's good quality, and I want to build a Hasegawa kit rather than just sticking with Tamiya products all the time. Anyway, so that's what's in there. Fingers crossed it's going to be a good build. And if you keep an eye on the channel, maybe subscribe to it, uh, and then you'll get the notification drop when I start building this thing. Enjoy. Cheers.